Hey, g'day people, it's Matt here from Matt Carbs. We are carving the queen today from the Lewis chess pieces. And the Lewis chess pieces, uh, well, I've carved them before and I've carved the king and the berserker. And now we're gonna carve the queen. Now I'm gonna carve out of oak and it is one of the hardest woods to carve. Not because of its hardness, well, yes, because of its hardness, but because it has these soft patches in between and so you can never really get a smooth surface until you really, really try. Yeah, sorry about that. I had a bit of an itchy nose there, but let's get on with carving. Let's sort out this oak. And what is the perfect speed to carve hardwood? Well, <laughs> sorry, but there ain't no perfect speed to carve hardwood because each hardwood is different. You've got oak here, and you might have purple heart next, you might have ebony, they're all different, they're all gonna have different speeds you need to carve in. Even oak's gonna be different, sort of like as you go from the inner parts of the tree to the outer parts, you're gonna get different softness. So really, you have to just move with the flow, see how your burr's cutting, adjust that speed, and um, you, that's all you can do, really. Now my general kind of rule with carving hardwoods as a choice of burrs is I usually go from a cutter burr to a diamond shaped burr just to get those tiny little details in and keep on shaping. Now I might go back to the cutter burr as well and see how that goes. Now the queen on the Lewis chess pieces along with all those other Lewis chess pieces they all have these big eyes. They're kind of almost cartoon eyes. So I'm just penciling that in. I'm really, really trying to get this carving to look really similar to the original. And the difficult part of this carving is the hand, which I have put on the left there, and that's what I'm aiming for on the right. Uh, and what I do first is I try and get the shape right and then I will put in the details of the hand. So really it's the contours of the hand sitting on the face first and then the shape of the hand. But now we're going to put in that hole that goes underneath the chin uh, and I tend to use a just a drill bit for that and I'll just go in with that and then I will expand that hole. I might do the drilling a couple of times at different angles but it's the easiest way to get a hole in this wood. Now we're trying to get that little bit of an undercut under the fingers, between the fingers and the face, and I'm doing that with those T-shaped burrs. They are very, very good for that because they are super skinny. And you might notice uh, all of those sort of pictures of the burrs have a number underneath. Well, that number just really corresponds to in the description. There is a number along there, and you will find where to buy those burrs from. And they're all uh, affiliate links. Well, not all of them, but most of them are affiliate links, so I get a small percentage, but it doesn't cost you any extra. And I thought that hand resting on the face was hard. I'm actually finding this one that is sort of like cupping the elbow even tougher. And this is no fast carving, but hey, I'm curious. I want to know how long you think this carving is going to take me to finish. Leave a sort of your best guess in those comments. And for those who think they are missing that Cutsall Flame Burr, here it is here. And I'm just using it for a little bit of general shaping around the shoulders and rounding off the knees and all those kind of little areas. 
And a big thank you to the members of this channel. Uh, here is a list of them. So big thanks to them. Uh, they just get a few little extra videos, uh, sort of like I showed them how I carve the fabric on this piece and all these other little kind of detailed parts that I don't put in the main channel. If you're curious about how much it costs, it's around about uh, $3 New Zealand, which equates to about US dollars is around about $2 a month or just a little bit under um, but hey thank you all for watching and we will see you in part two where i'm going to show you how i sand this and finish it off with a nice beautiful dark wax